Okay, welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Math Channel. This is question number five from the October 2021 Pure Mathematics P4 International A Level Ed Excel exam. And this question here is all about parametric equations. And we're told that there's a sketch of a curve C which has parametric equa equation um, x equals 5 plus 2 tan t, y equals 8 secant squared t, where t is between minus pi over 3 and pi over 4. We then want to use parametric differentiation to find the gradient of c at x equals 3. So they want us to use parametric differentiation. They don't want us to change this into Cartesian form <coughs> quite yet. They are going to ask us to do that in part b. So we have to use parametric differentiation in order to do this. So what we have to do is think about the, diff the gradient of a function is dy dx. That's our objective, to find the change of y with respect to x, which is dy dx. Now, dy dx can be written, rewritten in terms of parametric form, as if you have things in terms of y, x, and t, you can find what dy dt is, and you can multiply that by dt dx, and that will leave you with dy dx. So if we start off with, for example, the x, and we call it 5 plus 2 tan t, and we find the x dt, let's find the x dt, then you differentiate this with respect to t, 5 will become 0, 2 tan t, well the differential of tan of something is secant squared of the same thing, this becomes 2 times the secant squared of t. Okay, that's that part. For y, y is equal to 8 times the secant squared of t. We want to find dy dx. Now, this is a function within a function. You have something squared, okay, um, and inside that squared bracket, you could say you've got a function. So we can use the chain rule here. So let me just set it up first so it's more understandable. This is like 8 times the secant of t all squared. Okay, now if I differentiate this, I'm going to use the chain rule. So I'm going to differentiate it as if it's like a something raised to the power of something, where you multiply by the power, so 2 times 8 is 16. Then you take 1 away from the power, so this is secant squared t to the power of 1. And then I multiply by the differential of what's inside the function. Now if you differentiate secant t, you're going to get secant t tan t, as we know from our formula book. Okay, so there we have, um, if we simplify that a little bit, that's going to give us 16 times secant t squared, secant squared t, sorry, times tan t. So that's dy d, dt, sorry, not dy dx, dy dt, dy dt. We're so used to writing dt, dy dx, we keep writing it. So that's dy dt and that's dx dt. So we can say now that dy dx is going to be dy dt, which is this, Okay, 16 secant squared t times tan t times 1 over dx dt. So we want, we want, d, we want d, d, dt dx, which is going to be 1 over 2 secant squared t. So it's like multiplying by 1 over that is like dividing by that. So you can have over 2 times secant squared t. And we can see very clearly now what's going to happen. The... 2 cancels with the 16, leaving you 8. Secant squared t and t cancel squared t cancel out, leaving you with 8 times tan of t. Now, they ask us to find dy dx when x equals 3. Okay, so we're going to find what x, when x equals 3, what is t? If we find what t is when x equals 3, then we'll be sorted out. So we can rearrange this formula. We know x equals 5 plus 2 times tan t. So if we replace the x with 3, we have 3 equals 5 plus 2 times tan t. And if I rearrange it, I'll have minus 2 equals 2 tan t. So we can say the tan of t is equal to minus 1. And that's actually what we need. We have 8 times tan t. So we don't actually have to find what t is because we, we want what tan t is. Tan t is minus 1 when x equals 3. So therefore, we can say dy dx is equal to 8 times um, tan t which is 8 times minus 1 because tan t is equal to minus 1 so therefore you can say the gradient the gradient of c when x <coughs> equals 3 is 8 
is negative 8. Negative 8. And there's the answer to question part A of this um, question 5, part A of this question. And now I'm going to go on to part B. Okay, now for part B, it says the curve C has equation y equals f of x, where f is a quadratic function. Find f of x in the form a times x plus b squared plus c, where a, b, and c are constants to be found. So here is the equation in parametric form. We need to now write it in this Cartesian form, where y is some function of x. They've told us it will be some sort of a quadratic form, form when we write it. So what we're going to do now is we're going to try to combine these together and eliminate the t. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the x and I'm going to rewrite it um, so that I make tan t the subject. That's like one of the things that will help. So I'm going to make tan t the subject. So if I do that, I'll have basically x minus 5 divided by 2 is equal to tan t. Okay, that's the first step that I'm going to take. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, let me try to connect tan of, of an angle and the secant squared of that same angle together. Well, I can combine them together using the identity, the reciprocal trig identity. Now, if you forget what they are, you can always start with the most basic one, which is sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. If you want to have an um, identity that involves tan of theta, you can divide by cosine theta. If you divide by cosine squared theta, this becomes tan squared theta. If I divide cosine squared theta by itself, it becomes 1. If I divide 1 by cosine squared theta, that gives me secant squared theta. And that's exactly what I'm looking for. This means I can replace the secant squared theta here with tan squared theta plus 1. So let me just write this. So we know that y is equal to 8 times secant squared t. So I can rewrite this as 8 times tan squared t plus 1. And now I know that tan t is can be replaced by x minus 5 over 2. And when I do that, I will have now basically eliminated the t from my equation. So if I replace the tan squared t with x, be careful the whole of it is squared, including the 2 underneath. So with with x minus 5 over 2, all squared, and I've got plus 1. All right, I have now eliminated um, the t from my, in my equation. I've got now y in terms of x, but I want to just simplify it so it looks a bit more like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, multiply by that 8, both those terms. So I have, that will be x minus 5 squared. I can square that 2, it gives me over 4. And 8 times 1 is 8, so almost there. The 4 cancels with the 8 gives you 2. So you have y equals 2 times x minus 5 squared plus 8. So we can see now that it's in the form required, okay, which was in this form here. So we can say a is equal to 2, b is equal to minus 5, and c is equal to 8. You don't actually have to write that down because it's asking you to put it in this form, which we have done. And there's the answer to part b. Now, part C says, find the range of the function f. So the function f has this equation now, y equals 2, x minus 5 squared plus 8. And we can see it's a quadratic like this. And a quadratic has a maximum or a minimum. This has a minimum at this point here. This is the turning point, the minimum below which it never goes. It never goes below this point here. Okay, it will never go below that point here. And the minimum of a quadratic is found by its vertex. So if you have y equals 2 times x minus 5 squared plus 8, the vertex of this is going to be, um, well, the lowest value you can ever reach is 8. That's, that's going to be 8 there. And the y value, which we don't actually need here, is going to be 5. Whatever value makes this bracket 0. See, the reason why that's the vertex, the lowest you can ever go, is that you're always adding something to 8. You're adding something to 8 because whatever goes in this bracket is going to be squared. It's going to become positive. So the lowest, that the, lo the smallest thing you can add to the 8 is 0 when x is 5. This thing becomes 0 and you're left with y equals 8. So when x is 5, y is 8 is, a sm is, a, is the lowest it will ever go. That's where the vertex is going to be. So that the lowest value is 8. Now if this did not have any restrictions here, okay, like this, 
then I'm guessing we could just say that the 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 range would be why is, you could say f of x is greater than or equal to eight, and it will continue going up this way and that way. But here, no, that's not right. We have some restrictions, so that's not the answer. The restrictions are these two points here. So we got to figure out, you know, uh, what the y value is at these two points, and those two points will obviously be at the limits of these two. So we're not sure which is which one is which. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try both of those values. So I know that the y value is 8 times secant squared t. Now that's the same as 8 over, you can say cosine of t squared. All right, just make it easier for us. So I'm going to try the value of t of minus pi over 3. I'm also going to try the value of t of pi over 4 and see which one gives us a higher y value. And that will be the limit for the range. So I have 8 over the cosine of negative pi over 3 squared. I'll have y equals 8 over the cosine of pi over 4 squared. And we'll see which one gives us the correct answer. Okay, so I've got it in radian mode. Okay, so I'd have to set it up as 8 over, let me put this in a bracket. So I've got cosine of negative pi over 3 pi over 3 and I'll close the bracket and square that that gives me 32 so that's 32 and this one will give me what let's change this to pi over 4 change that to 4 over 4 and get rid of the minus sign and that gives me 16 okay so it's this is this is the highest value so therefore we can say that the range of f of x is f of x is between 8 and 32 this equal equal yeah so you're going to have a closed circle there closed circle there so it's going to equal this is going to be 32 and the lowest it reaches is 8 so there is the answer to part c and i think that concludes our question of question number five from this p4 paper other questions from this paper you can find in the playlist that will appear somewhere over there other questions about parametrics and differentiation of parametrics can be found um, um, in the playlist that should appear in this area you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link thank you for watching and see you soon